we'll be back on the estate tomorrow night when Karen finds out if Sharon's half-sister is also Barry's long-lost brother and Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's the estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary about the downfall of <laughs> Hamilton Man, which forced this year's early election. That's The Night Visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue. It's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in live and spooky. And tonight, they'll be asking if the old brewery in Arsminster... No, I'm not getting into a fight with Dave. You're just going to have to go up there and explain it to him. I mean, he's just counting for fuck's sake. Yeah, I know. I'm a bit scared of him too. You know, a bit. But, and my face is more valuable than yours. So if anyone's going to get punched, it's probably better that it's you. Yeah. You'll probably get lucky, probably just kicking the... Yep, standing by. Good evening. I'm Eamon Tightly. Behind me is a true TV legend. Now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's here tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just the Job, but as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, four, three, four, three. When you're feeling restless and you just can't stay the course, I got just the job. When you smell an odor, but you just can't find the source. I got just the job. Get me in on some brown breeze, Jeff. I'll take my great big plunger and I'll slip it down your trail. And once I'm finished pumping, this is your show, Nia, yeah. Cause that's just the job. Thank you, girls. Tracking stuff. Good evening, friends. And yes, it's true. I can hardly really believe it myself. But we are back with this special one-off reunion episode of Just the Job. And to be clear, it's the show that you remember. With the old psychic, little Jimmy's chisel, some top tips on how to improve your DIY. And of course, some special guests from Just the Job's illustrious past. And I know what you're all thinking. Oh. There's an election coming up. Well, there'll be no politics tonight. Not on this show, and that is a Peter Clement promise. So let's kick tonight off with a slightly askance look at the mighty bevel. Because you never know. Just hold it right there, please. Come on. It's you. Yeah, it certainly is me. Oh, you naughty, naughty fucking. Sorry, Frank, Frank, did you know about this? Yeah, look at that face. Go on, you fucking did. Peter, you fuckers. You thought you were here tonight to record a special reunion edition of Just the Job. I can't believe it. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. <laughs> Let's get you back to the studio, you fuckers, I'm gonna undo. And I can't believe it, those bloody gases you've had all the way along. They do. They're all part of this way, Peter, mind just step there. I don't know. I can't believe it. Honestly, I can't. Last night about you. Jesus, I don't need to call HR, do I? No, nothing like that. Ugh. No, why would you even think that? It happens to me a lot. I've got animal magnetism, apparently. Right, good for you. So do you want to hear about the dream? Too late, Eamon arrives in a sec. Tell me on the next playthrough. The next one? Oh, there's Eamon. Gotta go. Thank you so much. Tragic. Will no one think of the poor, confused NPCs? Have you vote? So, Eamon, how long have you been uh, planning this, Eamon? Eamon, how long have you been planning, Eamon? Eamon?
dear Gordon Clement, you were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering, to Fanny and Martin Clement. I know, right? Fucking tear away they made of you. That's right, they got up at the crack of dawn to make the journey down to the capital by coach. No, I didn't. It's your infamous old man. No, it isn't. And her long suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clement. You're not there. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's just stick to the script, see what happens. You pop your piece in there and then head over to the sofa. Right, you old pet. Hello, pets. Make the best of us. And not the worst. Chelsea, bloody butt! Pizza, bloody Clement! Oh. <laughs> OK, lovely, lovely. Let's all take a seat now. That's great. So, um, lovely to have you both here. Uh, let me ask you, um, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement house? You know, uh, well, I think, well, for both of us, really, it would have, well, it was about his father's, right? I mean, mine, well, he were never there because, what, what with work and, and the pub, of course. But I reckon that were a lot easier than it were for our PT because he's no mark of a father. We're always there. Ah, uh, me ma'am kept him in line most of the time. Yeah, she did, love. But, I mean, I mean, what, what about when she went to bingo or... Oh, you know, when she took that part-time evening job? I kept her safe. <laughs> Come on, P.T. Love. I've spent my whole bloody life trying to make up for the lack of love off me pa, right? But, and I'm sorry to say this, love, but P.T. here, well, he, he spent his whole life trying to make up for the lack of happiness. Oh, that's not fair. I had a good childhood, for the most part. You didn't, P.T. For the most part. You didn't, P.T. Sorry, love, but, well, neither of us did. Well, that got serious quickly. Uh, Chelsea, what's your name? Uh, Chelsea, Chelsea Bonds. Do you want me number? Chelsea Bonds, everyone, with the first of the bits of your life. <laughs> so, how are you? Are you married? How many kids have you? No bones for me, love. I mean, I did get pregnant once, you know, but uh, I couldn't make it. I mean, it was during the war, and I didn't even know whose it were, to be honest. But, um, well, you know, then something went wrong, you know, when they. And then after that, I just couldn't have any more. Oh, so, Chelsea, that's awful. Yeah, it is, look, but then that's life, isn't it? This is awful sometimes, but you just got to keep on fighting. That you do. <laughs> oh. In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? Well, it might not be what you were expecting, but you should still give it a jiggle out of politeness, as they say in politics. Well, it's me, ma'am, Eamon. It's me, ma'am, Eamon. That's off track. Uh, Peter's ma'am! Oh, and it's all power, look! That's what they all do. Son. Right. Lovely. So, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then that would have predicted his rise to household name and now aspiring Prime Minister? Peter's always been kind, even as a child with Beaky. He's got a good heart. And that's what you want in a leader. He's also very good at talking without saying very much. I can't deny that. I've made a career out of it. Oh, shush <laughs> you. He'll be a great leader for this country. After all, if you've got a good heart, who cares if your bang stick is wonky, as they say in the typing pool? Man, Park Clement, everybody! <laughs> I haven't got a wonky one, for the record. 
Well, we're going to be getting our next guest out in a minute, but first, let's take a look at a classic clip from Just the Job. It's on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd care to take a look. Oh, it's still and that's about two minutes. I'm going for a closer look. I have got wonky eyes. We're off track, Eric. I took Peter to one side while Jimmy did his solo spot Jim's things. I didn't want Peter to hear it from anyone else. Anyway, what happened next is history. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that a I think, OK. Is this some sort of fucking joke, Eric? Why would I want to be reminded of that? And it was totally I, I don't change the saying. It's, it's, it's some bloke called Dave. Oh, he didn't like that. Dave in the broadcast room. That's me. Right. I remember that. Can we reset, please? Shit. I'm going to have to leave the country. Not really, Earl James. <laughs> you walked in on your parents. Leave it, mate. Leave it. We just had a fax from the higher ups. Those who know better. I thought I might read it out for the viewers at home. What's going on? Well, I know what you're thinking. A fax? How modern! Well. <clears throat> To whom it may concern, latest viewer feedback from test audience. Show and host feel tired and past their prime. Show and host, fuck's sake. Sidekick, looks like he'd rather be somewhere else most of the time. Fair point. Bringing Frank on camera regularly has not improved engagement. The audience say, yeah, Frank. Jesus, peace, my mum watches this. The guests are mostly unknown to the audience. Then don't cut our fucking budget! You want... You pay peanuts, you get these fucking monkeys! I'm doing my best. Look, it's not your fault, gnashing Norman, but to be fair, you're a one-and-done act. I've got range. Have you? Uh, no, not really. New segments seem desperate. Uh, should we really be reading this out? Well, of course they're desperate. We've been doing this show since you prosperous assholes were just the bulge in your pool boy's trousers. PC, think it through, mate. Under the circumstances, the prudent option seems to be curtail the current season to a contractually obligated conclusion in three weeks. What? Frank? Sorry, Jimmy. True, mate. Three more shows. Yeah. See, the thing is, Eric, it doesn't actually matter whether there's a little Jimmy Chisel back there or not. The show's already off track. I thought we might be going somewhere, but it isn't, is it? It's just going somewhere random. Oh, please, Eamon. I've been in this business a long time, Eric. I, I know you have, Eamon. And I know when the ship is sailing smoothly, and I know when the ship is sinking. I know you do, Eamon. This ship is sinking, Eric. Three? I don't think it is. You know what you do when the ship is sinking, Eric? The you turn the ship around and rescue the show. No, oh, Eric, you bail. No, little Jimmy Chisel's back there. Excellent. He should be great company in a lifeboat, then, shouldn't he? Oi, I can't hear you, you know. Sorry, Jim. Ten seconds, everybody. And for the record, I'll be excellent company in a lifeboat. OK, going in five, four, three. Call this bluff, of course. Oh, fantastic memories there from one of the nation's oh, most beloved TV there. shows. The Just a Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to... Uh, oh, frankly, who cares? Uh, and there was always one bloke by your side. Uh, and there was always one Open bloke by your side. Open the ship! That's not his catchphrase. Here's a man who needs no introduction, so why bother? Little Jimmy Chisel. Right, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll throw you this life belt, little Jimmy Chisel. It just Jim these days. Right, I better pull you off, I suppose. Oh, look out for that shark, eh, man? What shark? Uh, you know what? No, no, I'm gonna stop this. No, I've got to have some shredded dignity left. I'm better than mime. Mine. 
Save me! Get off. Save me. Now there is a man who knows how to make an entrance. Oh. All right, PC. LJ. Oh, it's just him these days. Right you are, Jim. I am not going to argue with a recently drowned man. He is the best physical comedian in the entire country, and he doesn't get enough credit for it, in my opinion. Oh, uh, thanks, I guess. Well, I wish I'd said it to you all those years that we worked together. Yeah, I wish I had as well. Yeah, right. So um, I was going to ask you a question, then show you a clip from the old days, but there's no point in that now because we're so far off track and we've had to put up with a bleeding mime act. So um, I think we'll just get through this as quickly as possible and then everyone can go home. Rude. Don't worry about it, mate. This started way before you even came on. Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody! It's Jimmy. Right, that's four minutes off. Let's see who we've got next. We're going to show Apparently, the public like these shows that go wrong the most. Schadenfreude. Gesundheit. You know, it's been a lot nicer seeing you again than I thought it would be. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> See you for the song. Hurry up! If we even get there. Hurry up! Do you want me to come over there? Yeah. Sorry, Eamon. Abandoned ship! Abandoned ship! In 1941, long before just the job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Wrong guess, sweetie. I suggest you fire Eric. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit indeed, Eric. It's your old boss, Dorothy Hammerman. Yes, to me, you're as incompetent as ever, Eric. Yes, Eric. Damn, we've come off the tracks, so I'll make a note. And you're not exactly covering yourself in glory, Eamon. I've seen more flexibility in a union leader. I don't know what I was thinking. What were you thinking? It's another time, sweetie. Show must go on. Come on! Yes, Mrs. Hammond. Peasy! Got it with you. Always totty. For the old times. <laughs> oh, oh, how lovely. Look, they almost match. Here's, Here's one finger for the north, north two fingers to the south, and, and we can all apologise tomorrow. tomorrow. He's having a drink. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> 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 right, let's get on with it. Ah, right. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, joining us, uh, uh, Miss Hammerman. Thank you for, uh, yeah, well, you're very welcome. Us, uh, <laughs> Go uh, on, ask me the wrong question. Uh, we are. Uh, uh, what's it like being friends with Peter Pan? Oh, actually, I can't answer that question because, well, actually, it's bloody good fun. Oh, thank you, Dorothy. Dorothy Hammerman, everyone. Nobody has made me cry with laughter like this man. And nobody has helped me up where I stumbled and quite so many times. And I include in that list my somewhat lacklustre parents, God rest their souls. Oh, she barely needed me, truth be told. Oh, bless you, darling. But I think we both know I stumbled repeatedly in those early years. Never noticed it. Oh, that's the type of charm that's going to win you the election. We can, but hope. Well, I hope that when you get there, it's somewhere you can bear to be. It's not like show business, darling. In politics, they stab you in the front as well. Well, I'd better keep my wits about me then. Good. Be sure you do. Be sure you do. Come on then, Eamon. You can show me off now. Uh, are you sure? Quite certain, sweetie. Uh, are you sure? Uh, Dorothy Hammerman, everybody! <laughs> See you at the end of the big... Oh, shut up, Eric! Oh, shut up, Eric! I think we got away with that one. Let's have a clip from Petey! Let's have a clip from Petey! And a couple of minutes back... Same monitor as before, Eric. Uh, yes, yeah. So, four guests in. Still off track? What's your plan? I'm going to fashion an apology gift out of my own skin. 
Peters. For Dorothy Hammerman. In the country. I'm thinking a purse, maybe. One morning, I had Dorothy and Peter absolutely screaming at each other in her office. Even with the door shut, you could hear the swear words. <laughs> Actually, wasn't uncommon. You all right? Oh, he's proper us. angry now. Right, asshole. The fucker so groped uh, me. Direct relationship. I did think it was a bit of a weird choice. Why is it that everyone who works in TV is such a terrible cunt, Eric? It's just, uh, it's the job, isn't it? Reset, everybody! And Tim Hill, he was on the show that very night. Our next guest, or should I say guest, is sure to be a bit of a handful. Expect the unexpected. From Tim Hill and Polly! She's a bit protective. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Grab it, grab a chair. Oh, sorry, I don't know what's happened. There's normally a table here. Oh, don't worry about that. She likes it up close and personal. I bet she does. What's wrong, Paul? She says she should apologize for casting aspersions on her character. Oh, right you are. Sorry, Polly. She says you should apologize with a kiss. <laughs> Careful, you thing you'll get me into trouble with Mrs. C. She says she's not afraid of Mrs. C. I can't say that. But I can't. Oh, yes, you can. She says she's got nicer legs than Mrs. C and Anita. Watch yourself, pal. I told you we wouldn't like it. Mrs. C is a very private person. I would thank you. I would thank you both. To leave her out of this. Got that, Paul? <laughs> Quiet, you lot. She really is very sorry. <laughs> oh, for pity's sake. Oh, she like that. Yeah, I can see she does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, e e take, take it easy there, Polly. But, e e it's not me, it's her. She she must really like you. Yeah, yeah, watch it, watch it there, pal. Oh, hey, got it, got it. What's mad with the camera, darling? Hey, that's, that's my... No, stop, 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 stop. stop. Eamon, just breathe, Eamon. You fucking breathe. This show has been a shambles from the start. What is required now, Eric, is something significantly more than breathing. What do you mean, Eamon? It's expression, Eric. Quit while you're ahead. Do you know that expression, Eric? Please, Eamon, just think about it. Oh, I will. I'm going to stand here and think about it, and you, Eric, you're going to go over there and do that thing you do with the stopwatch. We've had to drop the signal there, so viewers never got to see Jesus. And then, we'll see what happens next. Tim Hill got a black eye and refused to work with Channel One again. Peter got an official command from Bozeman. Seconds. And in his usual manner, just going in five, four, three. And Polly, she got her head ripped off. Eamon, we're live. Eamon, we're live. Eamon! Jesus, a racial true bearing Christ. What now, Eamon? Yes, right. So here we are. Yeah, we're back there now. Sorry about that. Well, unforgettable stuff. Uh, but while you took all the credit. But while you took all the credit. While you. While you. While you. While you. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, oh. no, come on, come on, no, no, no. Come on. Come on. <laughs> what is that? 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 What is What that? What is 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 that? That's it. No. Eric, you no. need to get this man some help. No. Eric, you need Mr. to get Clement, this man please. Some... No, I've had Mr. enough. Clement, no, I've been trying to maintain a full I've smile all evening, but this show seems designed to annoy me. I mean, who chose those clips for fuck's sake? And I am sober enough to know that no good is going to come from staying around and watching this once great entertainer have a nervous collapse. 
I'm, I'm sure he'd be fine in a minute. I really wouldn't I'm be too sure, sure about that. We're going to get everyone out to do the song in a bit. There is not going to be a fucking song, Eric! We are done! We are done! I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but this evening's episode of Bits of Your Life is coming to an end prematurely. I'm sure they'll find something to put in the gap in the shed. I don't know, probably something like cat football or something equally pointless. Clearly, Eamon Tightly is having a difficult moment. I'm sure I could do the song. Oh, don't, don't be ridiculous, Eamon. Don't, don't be ridiculous, Eamon. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. In a few weeks, I will be asking for your vote. I'll be asking you to decide whether I'm the type of man who will have your back in a crisis. Well, one thing I did learn in Konoslava is not to leave any man behind. Is not to leave and tonight, the man who has fallen and tonight, the man who is Eamon Tightly. I've been getting angry all night when I should have shown concern. This show should never have happened. Eamon evidently needs help not to be given a handful of pills and forced back onto the treadmill. I would quite like my pills. Because this horrible, horrible, horrible fucking industry Entertainment will Industry. take everything that you have, and nothing, nothing will nothing satisfy its appetite. But satisfy it's, its not appetite. just it's not entertainment, just. is it, ladies and gentlemen? It's everything. Is it, and it's gentlemen. the continual grafting it's the continual and getting poorer. And getting it's poorer. the working two jobs it's and not being able to jobs. feed your children because we're all on the fucking treadmill, <laughs> except for those privileged and entitled <laughs> bastards who <laughs> own it. Own it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, ladies and gentlemen, if you vote for me in seven weeks, me, time, in seven weeks time, I will guarantee you this. I will guarantee Advance you. will smash that Advance. fucking treadmill smash that f and give you your treadmill. dignity back. And give you your dignity. Back. Roll in titles. <laughs> And we're out. Thank you, everybody. Just a fucking job. Just a fucking job. Do you ever feel like you're running? Alrighty, alrighty. He's such a sweet.